you experienced firsthand the Boko Haram siege in Mubi, Mubi town. Tell us about it. Yes, it's not just Mubi town per se. It didn't start in Mubi town, but Mubi town happens to be the last um, largest town in in that in that sub region that was conquered by um, by the insurgents. But my own place is um, uh, is like a village close to Mubi, about hundred kilometers, okay, eighty something kilometers from Mubi actually. So these people moved from Borno, the Borno side of uh, the northeastern part of the country. They moved from um, a town called Goza. No, sorry, they captured one one of the largest local government in Borno State, which is Bama. They moved on to Goza. They moved on to my own local government, which is uh, Madagali local government. Then from Madagali local government, they moved over to Movi, where they captured that city. And then, because it's a very large city, it's a commercial nerve center that uh, hosts, you know, um, uh, that the, the market there is it's an international market. People from Niger, from uh, Chad Republic, from Cameroon come to that place for market. So it's, it's one of the largest towns in, in, in Adama State. And when they captured that place, they made it like their capital, one of the you know capital cities of, of, of their of their emirate. Actually, they 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 changed the name of that town, Mubi, from Mubi to Madinatul Islam, meaning the the city of Islam. All right. So uh, it's a very, very tragic, very, it, it, no human vocabulary can explain the ravage and the destruction and the killing, the maimings that these people carry that in my place. Up till this moment, you know, Mubi is not yet fully uh, inhabited. People have not actually, a um, few days ago, precisely five, six days ago, um, uh, the troops in uh, with the, the local hunters were able to recapture Mubi but people have are yet to move back to that place but from Mubi down to uh, Madagali Uba, from Mubi to Uba to Madagali to these are villages or towns major towns within that axis that, are, that is under the control of Boko Haram so from that axis down to a place called Bama in Borno State down to Gamborongala in fact the land the land mass you know Consecutively speaking, it's just like the size of Ghana, the place, the the town under the control of Boko Haram until last week. So what we are talking about now is that, is apart from Mubi, no other town has been reclaimed by the Nigerian mili uh, uh, military uh, authority. Sorry, the, the military and the combined effort of the vigilantes or the local uh, 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 vigilante group. So what we are still having now is a very serious humanitarian problem, you know, because as I'm speaking to you, my own mom, my dad, my entire town, you know, they have been, you know, they've been away from, so they've been evacuated, you know, they had to run and leave those places for the past three months, you know, leaving behind their farm products, their, their, their everything, you understand? So as at, up to this moment, as I'm talking to you, the whole of that axis, apart from the reclaiming or the recap of, of Mubi town by the Nigerian military, you know, no other town has been reclaimed fully yet. So uh, we are still facing a very tragic situation. The, the humanitarian situation, situation is alarming. You know, my own parents, my siblings, and everybody, we are now taking refuge in a city in the, in the, sorry, the state capital called Yola. That is where we are taking refuge at this moment. You know, but up till this moment, it is still a very sad very sad and very tragic uh, uh, sight and then story to, to tell. You know, it's unfortunate, but up to this moment, we can't say, you know, uh, categorically that, you know, the army are in control as it were. Okay. So the army has come out to say that they're in control of the town. So right mm -hmm. now, what's the situation on ground there? The situation on ground is that, you know, few, uh, of, of course, the, as I've said earlier on, the, the, the army, in conjunction with the local hunters, were able to reclaim the city of Mubi. Mm -hmm. All right, um, the Emir of Mubi was able to. I think he, he went back to town at the time three days ago. You know, but the the people they they are asking people to come back. But you know, the pressmen were there f four days ago, five days ago. They took clips, video clips of the the destruction of the city, and up till now, you will still find dead bodies littered you know, all around the city. You know, it's a sorry sight to see, you know, and that further, you know, dampened the spirit of those who were even willing to go back because the 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 videos or the the pictures taken from those places, from Mubi Town, you know, by 
the, the media who went there to have a kind of, okay, first-hand information of what is on ground now, now that the military said they have taken over the city. They came back with those visuals, and actually it further dampened the spirit of those that wanted to go back because almost everywhere is destroyed. You know, so serious destruction of, of properties, of places of worship, you know, and everything. And then dead bodies were littered everywhere. So the Neymar boss said that it is not even safe for people to move back to Mubi at, at this moment because the, the town needs to be formulated, as it were. If not, if people should just move back now, you know, it's a sorry sight, you know. People that have been you know, a few of my relation, one of my relation was able to go back. When she got back, everything in her house has been ransacked. It's either they, you know, uh, they broke into the houses and took away their belongings, their personal belongings, or people that had, you know, uh, domestic animals, they were carted away to where we don't know, or those that have uh, maybe beautiful edifices, they were broken, either vandalized or destroyed or burnt completely, and all that. So the situation on ground right now is that Mubi. It's not yet safe, as it were, to, for people to go back. Yes, it has been reclaimed. The insurgents have been chased out of the city. Even the the person that the, the what they call it, they call the person Amir. That is like the king, the new king they installed over Mubi was actually captured. Okay, and all that. So they have moved out of Mubi, but they have moved to the hinterlands. You know, because very recently, you know, I think a few days ago, a, ta a town about 50 kilometers away from Mubi. You know, after the, the after the reclaiming of Mubi by the military and the joint effort of the of uh, the local hunters, 50 kilometers away from Mubi, no, less than 50 kilometers, about 45 kilometers, a, a town called Lhasa. You know, they went there, you know, and then did serious havoc. They killed not less than 100 people, burnt houses down, burnt places of worship. So yes, they have moved out of that major town, but they moved into the hinterland and they are causing serious havoc. So, as I tell you, as at this moment, that place is not totally safe, you know, but there, are, there is serious effort. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. We have at least the reclaiming of the city of Mobi give us hope that maybe soon, uh, we don't know how soon, but soon things will, uh, will be able to move back to our homes, you know, and, and all that. Big. But Mobi town is just the last happens to be the last place or the last town that was captured you know by the insurgents where they really had a, you know a strong grip and a hold changing the n name of the town to marginal islam and all that but it is not yet completely over okay sir mm. i have to ask you do you think the government should have done more or do you think the army should have done more to protect the town from the insurgents do you the, think that things should have gone differently the way it went yes the, the, the difference there is that we had expected that the military would have put up a fight against these people. I'm telling you this as a first hand, uh, as a victim and uh, someone that has first hand information about these things. Mo the military were actually chased out of the town. They never stood to resist these people. This is, this is truth. This is the truth. This is the fact. You understand? You know, they never stood to resist the people in gunshot or to engage them in a fight. You know, they will, they will, they are, they were, the military were the people telling us that these people are coming, we should move, we should run. So we ran out of the town, or out of our villages and towns, and you know, all those axes with the military people. Okay, we, as some of us, assisted the military to move out of, out of the town. You know, we took them on bikes. Some, some of them, you know, three of them will climb a bike. To move out with their gun, they were running. Some of them were removing their 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 their, their cloth. Their, sorry, their uniforms. You know, some of them were without shoes. This is a true situation, and even the military can attest to this fact. You know that the military helped. You know what they, they what they succeeded in doing is that they 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 acted as like town criers. They were like town criers to us. They they were able to give us free information that these people are on their way. They are coming to the town, so we should run out. So we ran out of the town with them. So we didn't see any, uh, uh, what they call it, bravery or any act by the military to resist this, these people. Not, in fact, let me tell you the truth. In Michka, Michka is one of the biggest towns in Adama State. F less even from Goza. Goza happens to be one of the biggest towns in Borno State and is, is bordering, is one of the towns bordering, uh, uh, bordering Adama State. Okay, Goza was taken hit free by these militant militants. Okay, we are, we, we are all uh, privy to the 
to the announcement made by or the video clip released by Shekau that Goza, the first caliphate actually, he announced that look, this is the first caliphate and all that. In Goza town, the military were chased out, but they were able to mobilize and then they moved back, you know, but we knew what happened. They were unable to dislodge the people from Goza. So these people were able to take hold of Goza and then they even moved to a mobile camp. Okay, we have a, one of the most strategic and one of the uh, very powerful mobile, mobile police uh, uh, campground in this country, Go, the Goza Hill. All right, we all had it on news. We are all privy to those to those fact that these militants went to the went to the camp, so went to the to the mobile camp that is mobile police camp, ab and abducted over sixty of them. To this moment, even the police authority tell us that look, over thirty of those of their men, that is the mob, the policemen, are still missing till this moment as I'm talking to you, all right? So they were able to gain ground in Goza. They moved into Madagali, which is the next major town to Goza, and there was not a resistance from the military. They chased out the military out of that way. They retreated. Then the next major town to Madagali is Gulak, which is the capital, sorry, the, the, the local government capital of uh, uh, the capital, say, sorry, the, of, of Madagali local government. They moved back to Goza, sorry, to, Madag to Gulak. And in Gulak, the military were able to mobilize their, their what they call their weapons and all that. It's, it, it was a jubilation time, you know, th the day that the military moved with their full armory to uh, uh, Gulak you know, local government. But the, the one of the most tragic things that happened was that with all those things, those the military were taken unawares by these insurgents. You know, they were able to to what do they call it, dislodge them, dislodge the military from, from Madagali, sorry from Goza, took over their their camp, you know, snatched their 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 ammo tanks and then the military ran. Some of them ran to our village. Some of them we had to assist them on the way out okay out of the place because they, they are not familiar with that terrain okay so we moved out we ran out with them to michka from michka those people also came still came to michka push chased us chased sorry chased the whole ransacked the whole city chased out both the military and civilians out of michka and then some of us had you know found refuge in in mubi and uba but the last straw that broke the camel's back was the attack on mubi because that is where we had the worst humanitarian situation. Because when they still move to, to Mubi, it's a fact. Ask anybody that is, is an indigenous or, or that, that, was, that, that was there, or, you know, when this thing happened, all right, when the attack, you know, was made on Mubi, there was not single resistance. There was not any resistance from the military. The military simply ran out. There, there are pictures and visuals to authenticate this fact that we, we ran out with the military. You know, out of the place from with the military to the state capital. You know, uh, 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 to, sorry, that is the Adama state capital, which is which happens to be Yola. So both the military and the civilians, you know, were able right. to, you know, we had to run to a, to a safer ground. So th there is the the fact that, you know, so to answer your question directly, you know, the truth of it is that there was no, there was no, um, there was no effort even a single effort by the military to safeguard those places. You know, on the, uh, what do they call it? On the sad note, we ran out. They, asked, they just helped. If they had helped us, the help they rendered to us was that, look, they were able to announce to us that these people are on their, on their way and that we should run out, okay? So I think if that is an assistance, in a way, they have assisted us. They assisted us in telling us that, look, these people are coming, we should run out of the town before they get on they us get and on our ways. Sabo, I have to ask you, you were there, you know yes. how everything happened. Correct. Just tell us, give us an insight to exactly what happened, the invasion. We heard so many things about people getting killed, women and children getting displaced. We want to know what exactly happened. Well, whenever these people come into town, what they do is that they start shooting randomly. They shoot at sight. You know, the only people they spare are the women, you know, only women, you know, especially those women that are maybe the aged or the elderly, but they spare women, but they shoot at sight. They don't want to see anything called man, sorry, so anybody in trouser, so to say, you know, they don't want to see such persons. If they, they shoot at sight, sometimes they shoot randomly. So these parodic t shootings, you know, sometimes it, it also, you know, gets caught up with 
especially the women and the children, you know, and all that. So whenever they come into town, they shoot randomly. They begin bombing, you know. Uh, they are well, they are well armed, you know. So they bomb. They begin shelling the town. They, they, and but most of the time, what they do is that any town that has a bank, you know, or major commercial cities, what they do is that as soon as they come in, they face the bank or a town that has a police station or the military barrack. For instance, the military barracks in Mubi happens to be one of the, I think, uh, it's a barrack, it's, it's a military formation, it's a battalion. So I think, and I, consecutively, I'm not a military person, but I learned that, uh, you know, about 500 to 1,000 soldiers make up a battalion, you know. So they took over the entire city, r you know, ransacked the, 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 the barracks, they moved to the barrack. Anytime they come into the city, the first target is normally the police station and the army barrack or the military barracks where there are, you know, military formations. They did that in, in, movie, in, in, uh, in Burma until this moment. There is no military, there is no single military officer that is living in barracks in, in Burma. They sacked the whole place. They came to Mubi, okay, till this moment, until last one, until one week ago, you know, we don't have a military barrack anymore there. What happened to them? These people moved in, and let me tell you the truth, there are less than 200 that we came into Mubi. Meanwhile, we had less, we had, we have, we had, you know, from from the authority, from the figures given by the authorities, we have about three, over 3,000 soldiers on ground. And these insurgents are less than 200. They came into the town, burnt the whole town, ransacked the town, sacked the military, chased them out, you know, bombed the places. So when they come to town, they bomb the police stations or they ransack the police stations, you know, kill the police people, and then go to, if, there's, if, if there are military formations in those localities, they go to the military barracks, you know, take over the military barrack. Even the, the marginal Islam, sorry, the, the Amir, Amir is like the, the new Emir. They call their local chief or whoever takes over. When they take over the city, they install an Amir over it. They call it Amir. The Amir that took over, sorry, the, when they took over Mubi, the Amir, that means the new Emir of Mubi, you know, uh, lived in the barrack. It was in the barrack that the vigilante, local vigilante people with the military, you know, were able to catch him. So if the situation was like, how were you able to escape with your family? Yes, just as I told you, you know, whenever they are coming, they will begin shooting sparadically. They will begin bombing, you know, so they will be, sh this is their, what they call this uh, RPG, rocket, rocket propelled grenades, you know, it's one of the deadly weapons they normally use, okay? So when we hear the sound of those shootings, you know, and then the bombings, people begin to run. But when they come to town, what they first, what they normally do is that they will say, we have not come for you. We have come for the military and they are against anything government. When they can stop you, even if you're a man, and they will ask you one or two, three questions. One of the first questions they'll ask you is, where do you work? Do you work for government? If you work for government, the first thing they, they, will, they will slaughter you. Whether you are a Muslim or a non-Muslim, it doesn't, they don't care. You know, as long as you work for government, you are gone. They don't discriminate Islam or anything. The second thing is, they will ask you, are you a Muslim or a Christian? If you say you are a Christian, then they will ask you, okay, are you ready to renounce Christianity and embrace Islam? If you say no, they slaughter you, all right, and all that. So that is how they operate, you know. But sometimes they don't even, they don't even care to ask the men, you know, where they work or whether they are of the Christian, sorry, faith or the Islamic faith. What they do is that they just shoot at sight. You know, but normally they will normally ask, okay? Usually they will normally, you know, they, 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 they usually ask, you know, what kind of, what uh, part of the, sorry, uh, faith, you know, what aspect of the faith you, you practice, whether Islam or, or Christianity. Another thing about these people is that truly, initially, you know, initially, these people came with the coloration of Islam. And that, you know, from that angle or perspective, they were able to actually garner support and the sympathy of East, uh, Muslims. So you, you think it's no longer a religious war? Anymore? It is not. It is not. Because these people, they have their own version of Islam. So that even if, you know, they meet, they meet sorry, they, they meet a person in town or they catch up, sorry, they, they catch a victim or whatever in town, what they do is that they will ask if you're a Muslim. And if you say yes, they will ask you to reconvert to their own version of Islam. They, they, start, they, don't, they, don't, they don't bow down their head to the ground to pray. 
they pray with their shoes on. They enter the mosque with shoes on. They don't, they, you know, they pray standing. Okay, so they have a very, very unique, unusual, you know, um, pattern of worship and all that. And I think that is where, you know, the eyes of our Muslim brothers and sisters got clearer. Not only in them, but every other person that look, disciple are not Islam as it were. You understand? Because even if when you are a Muslim, they will seek to reconvert you to their own version, version of, Islam. of Islam. You understand? Which is, which is bloody, which is uh, deadly, which they, they pray standing, they don't have regard for human life, you know, they, they suck blood, they, you know, they behead people. It's, a very, it's a more of a cult than, than a religion. It's more of a cult than a religion. And, and I think the, the, the sad news is that people got to know about this too late. Because initially when they came, or when they started their oppression, they want so much sympathy from our brother, uh, uh, Islamic or Muslim brothers and sisters. Until now, that we all know that these people are not truly Islam as, it, as they confess or they profess to be. They have their own version. It's more of a cult than Islam, as actually. Okay. Yeah. Speaking, you said when they go to the banks, they, they ransack the banks. Yeah. What exactly is their aim when they go to these banks? Of course, money. You know, they go to not only, but even the. the so that's basically the, how they are funded. Yes, they are, that's how they are funded because, uh, you know, most of them, they, before now, before now, before the rainy season started, they are not actually living in town. They were not capturing towns as it were to live in them. They were just hiding within the people. They, all of these people lived in the Sambisa forest. You know, they live in the forest. That is their fortress. That is where they lived all this while. But when the rainy season came, you know, it's like the place became mush, mushy, okay? And then, so, so they were not able to move their trucks within those vicinity. So what they now started doing was they capturing embarked town. on capturing towns and then settling there. And that is what they have done over time. Till this moment, about seven to eight local government in Borno State, about six on the side of Adama State, total about 13 to 15 or 16 local government is completely under their control and they live in those towns. They hoist their flag. Okay, up till this moment, you know, till this day, till this moment that I'm talking to you, apart from Mubi that has been reclaimed, okay, from Uba to Michika to these are major towns, local government areas, okay, to Madagali, to Goza, to Bama, to Gamborungala, is still completely under their control. Okay. You said Mubi has been reclaimed by the military. Correct, yes. But are there still fears or do you still think that these insurgents can still move into this town? Yes. The fear is so obvious because this these insurgents have not moved you know uh, a, a, a sorry to a longer distance, so to say, from that Mubi environment. You know. Because as I, just, I, I told you earlier on that, about 45 kilometers, 46 kilometers away from Mobi, a town called Lhasa was attacked just last week after the reclaiming of Mobi. While the military and other people were trying to consolidate their grip on Mobi, reclaiming Mobi, they were attacking oh, the interiors. Else. Okay, So this will have not moved too far from Mobi. They are still within those areas. Yes, the, within the town, the Mobi uh, metropolis, so to say, the, the presence of military there, they are no longer there, but they have moved to the hinterlands where the villagers live, where people have their farms. Okay, for instance, my parents, my, you know, were, they left their farms about three months ago, for the past three, four months, you know, and that is what, the fear is that there will be serious food shortage or food crisis, you know, in, after this moment. If nothing is done within the next maybe one month or latest one and a half month, you know, to reclaim this axis because these communities are predominantly farmers, okay? And they left their farm products on the farm three months ago and they are still there, you know? These things are yet, you know, they have not harvested them. It's time for harvest now and they have not harvested. They don't know the state of those things. And most of the food that is brought to the south, especially beans, guinea corn or maize, you know, are you know, uh, you know, normally produced from those, from that axis, hundreds and thousands of bags, you know. So they are very serious farmers. And now this place has been reclaimed. They, nobody can access his village or his farm, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, their farms or people's farms to, to get these products harvested. So it's a very tragic situation. And uh, that is the situation as it is at this moment. So what would you suggest the solutions to recapture all these towns taken by Boko Haram. Okay, the solution is let me re let me 
um, remind you of what the president, uh, the commander in chief, the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria said three days ago, or was it a week ago? Sorry, four or five days ago. He did say that the fight against insurgency or the Boko Haram is being made impossible due to sabotage, okay, from within and without. And what we have seen actually is that look, there is more to the Boko Haram insurgency, you know, than meets the eyes. It's very seriously. Because the truth of it is that these people, they don't stand to actually fight. Okay? They don't resist these people. They don't engage them in a fight. They are always on the defensive and they kept retreating. The military have been retreating. What has helped in the reclaiming of Mobi is not just military effort per se. It is a known fact to all of us that the, the vigilante, the local vigilante, were the people that are largely responsible for the claiming of these places. All right? They were able, they were, they are, should I say they are more brave? Permit me to say they are more brave in, fight, in fighting these people or standing them than the military. That is the truth. Okay? One may not want to hear this, but that is the truth. So the reclaiming of this, of this, of, of Mobi and any other place that we wish or the government will wish to reclaim will depend largely not just on the effort of the military but on empowering the local vigilante. The local vigilante did so well. They stood out of about a thousand of them that were sent to these places and they actually engaged this pool in, in a fight. Only one was missing. Only one died, was killed. Okay? And only four of them were injured. Uh, over, over a thousand of them that have engaged this pool for the past three, four, five weeks. Only one of them have died. And only four of them were injured. So the solution is, let's, let the government empower the vigilante. Let them allow the vigilante, okay, to go in, all right? They know the terrain. Partly maybe they know the terrain. No, number two is that, look, these people, okay, look, they, they are fighting for their life now, so to say. You know, because the local vigilante is made up of other, other, other hunters from hunters from other cities and towns, and then in uh, in uh, in collaboration with the local hunters that uh, that were chased out of these places by the by the by the Boko Haram. All right. So I suggest that the military, if possible, military should hands off the fight against the insurgency. If possible, I'm just saying if it is possible, they should hands off the fight again because hence we are seeing the what they call it sabotage that there are sabotage. Okay, we, this is a known thing. Okay, that there are saboteurs even within the military. Okay, there are people that are also sabotaging the effort of you know the, the fight against this, this insurgency. Okay, we've had of corruptions. We've had even a few weeks ago, six of the military commanders were handcuffed and brought to Yola, and the reason was. They ran, they ran, sorry, they ran from the battleground, okay? They abandoned their troops on battleground, all right? So many things, so many things were, uh, reasons were adduced to it. Some people were even said, look, some of them collected bribe. We cannot authenticate those, those, those stories. But the truth of it is that what has helped us, especially in that axis, are the local vigilante, all right? So the local vigilante are the solution to this fight against the vigilante. If they can blend well and cooperate with the military, which they have done so well, especially in Adama State, in reclaiming Mubi, I think the government should give them more recognition. If, if possible, arm them, okay? If possible, arm them, they should have their own way of trying to see that look, okay? These people are properly, uh, uh, do, sorry, uh, uh, maybe verified, you know, to know who is who, which is what they tried to do some time ago, but they should be armed. If uh, they should they should also work in tandem with the military, that is the only solution. But if the military is left alone to go about what we have, sorry to, to go about the, the uh, fighting these people or reclaiming the cities, um, people have lost confidence in them, and I don't think it could be the last solution. So people they should be they should be empowered. The local Virginia should be empowered. They are the ones that gave us hope. They are the ones responsible for the reclaiming, majorly reclaiming of this of this of these towns and all that. Okay, this is my final question. I have all to right. ask you, mm. what do you think the military is not doing right, that these vigilantes are doing better, mm. that makes you think they can do better in reclaiming all these towns taken over by the Boko Haram? What the military, no, no will. They don't have, they don't have the, the willpower to fight. They behave more like cowards. I'm sorry to say this word, but they behave more like cowards than the military that we know Nigerian military or army to be. You know, we could adduce 
so attribute so many reasons to this partly the sabotage partly maybe they are not properly motivated you know another reason could be look okay several reasons you know but truly they have not shown courage in the fight against this Boko Haram okay they have not shown commitment that we we know them to you know to have in others on in other 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 countries you know we are told of the Nigerian military they, 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 they were told that look and from record they are one of the best military military men around the world okay they have helped in you know the fight in Liberia in most of these African countries so why couldn't they do it at home you know and all that so the 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 military if I say they have failed us I may not be I should not be misjudged by saying that partly because maybe because I'm a victim you know and because of what I saw on ground but if there is a change in strategy that this military are empowered you know maybe they could be given more empowerment and all that. another aspect sorry before I forget to this uh, the the Boko Haram uh, or the insurgents is that look they, they there is this there is this there is this um, uh, there's this revelation, call it revelation, call it fact, that they also use some spiritual powers. Church. Yes, they also use some spiritual powers. Okay, they don't just fight with the guns, but they go along with fighting with the gun or conventional warfare, they are also spiritually armed in doing this. And that is the advantage that the vigilante have over the military. They don't just because most of, all of the vigilante, without an exception, what they have is then gone. Not even a, what they call, not even this AK-47, then gone. That you have to, you shoot one, and then you have to repackage again to shoot the next one. But, you know, but they move freely into this, into, into the midst, to the midst of, sorry, these reclaimed towns, and they capture them with hand, with bare hand. You understand? You know, and these people are also af more afraid of the vigilante than the military. You understand? So, the vigilante, one, is that, look, they also use some spiritual means, okay? Number two, they are used to the local terrain, okay, they are to the terrain, okay, that is uh, the, the vicinity, other than maybe a military of man or officer that is taking from a quiet bomb to Yola, okay, who may not know actually the terrain, okay. So all these uh, are part of the things that give the vigilante an advantage in the fight against these insurgents.